This is the default 7 theme adjuster, which was added in version 7.17. You can find this by going to the options menu, going to themes, and then this shortcut, theme adjuster color controls. You need to be on the default theme or any theme based on version 7. You may remember the previous theme adjuster from default 6, which you can get to from that same shortcut, which looks like this, with many settings for the layouts of the track control panels, the mixer panels, custom colors, envelope page, and global settings. The new default 7 theme adjuster has all the same features and more. So starting off on the global page, we've got control over custom colors for like the default custom color. Whether we're applying the custom colors to the track labels, you can see that as I toggle that. How much of the custom color gets applied to the overall track control panel area, not just the color bar. And we can also adjust the global text brightness, which affects all areas of the theme, not, not uh, within plugins and things like that, but all areas within the theme to, uh, to tweak the color brightness. We also have functions for the track selection. So how much uh, color overlay, like how much brightness is added when you click on a track to show that it's selected. Uh, do we also invert the text color to make it white? And do we also use this selection dot? Three different ways of marking which tracks are selected. And if you want to turn any of those elements off, you can easily do that. Custom color palette returns from the default six theme adjuster. So you can choose different color palettes and quickly apply a random color based on these color palettes or return to the, the default Reaper one. And then there's color processing. You've seen this before in previous updates. And this is sort of to adjust the theme, to kind of scale all the colors. So this is sort of to adjust for eyesight, to take a theme that already looks good and just kind of scale it one way or another sort of thing. Rather than individually adjusting the colors of every component, you can kind of add a modification using this function to, uh, you know, increase the, the gamma, to apply a tint to something, uh, things like that. Now, if you've totally messed up your theme at this point by playing around with this, totally fine. It happens to me every day. Uh, we can just hit this reset all values to their default and then it'll warn you that it'll, it's going to reset. Just like that, we're back to the default theme uh, with no modifications. But on, on the other hand, if you don't want to reset, you can always export and import your settings as well. So let's say we want the selection overlay to be like 33% and maybe the global text brightness will just increase by like 5%. Let's just go like 17% more saturated. Let's use the export any changed values to a file and we'll just call that my theme parameters or custom or any name you want. If you make any changes like resetting, we can now import that from this uh, theme adjustment file. So Reaper is going to automatically take you to the correct folder, which is the scripts folder, the Cocos folder within that. The default seven theme adjustment file is a new file type uh, for these sorts of uh, presets. And then I hit OK, and all those changes that I made have returned. Coming over to the track controls page, all the elements of the track control panel area can be adjusted as basic as picking sort of a different background color. Um, there's four preset kind of dark colors, but we can always click on the paintbrush here, the paint roller, and then pick any color. And then sort of like this blue becomes the base color for new tracks or returning back to uh, this default color. The dividers between tracks can be, uh, you can change the opacity of that. How folder indents work, we can uh, adjust how much of that is happening. So 20 is the default, but you can have more or less. And then spacing, how close those, uh, those icons fit together. So tweak this as much as you like. There's different rules for how, uh, how the elements are balanced when there are tracks within folders. So if you like to have the track names lined up or you like to have the, the track controls in the same place all the time, 
uh, you can try these different options to like keep that consistent or as much as possible. In addition to that, you can drag and drop the order of the the different elements. So mutant solo buttons can be put uh, pretty much anywhere. Uh, have that locked to the left side, for example. You can have the routing button before that. The order of this does apply to all labels, and you can kind of see that here in this uh, section where it says all layouts, and then there's the three icons. What this actually is is sort of a shorthand for the ABC. And so in this section, only one of these is lit up. But um, if we go to these, uh, click on the triangle or click on the square, then we've got the layout B and layout C there. You know, just sort of like a nice kind of icon to show that, but it also does spell it out, layout A, layout B. And the sections that apply to all layouts will have all of these icons filled in We'll say all layouts here in this section and this section. Now, in the visibility section, we can control things like meter values. Uh, if the track is, if the mixer is visible, do we want the meter values, the labels, the trim controls, all the different settings can be, uh, the different sort of elements within the track panel can be hidden or shown and this applies that uh, you have different rules for each of the layouts, which is really nice to have. So a really common one for people uh, to have is this meter values thing. If you want to see the meters all the time, you just need to uncheck um, sort of any, any anywhere where it says hide. Just uncheck that. If you want to see the label values, so it, which is your uh, the position of the volume knob, you can set that. Otherwise, it hides. So yeah, customize that for layouts A, B, and C. Let's come back to some of these other settings here, like the section assignments, section properties. Let's come back to those. They're a little more advanced. They'll take a bit of time. So let's move on to the envelope controls page. So if we have a envelope panel uh, shown, we can customize the background color. So it's unselected, it looks like this. Let's show two panels because you can only have one of them selected at a time, so you can kind of see the the difference. We can show the the values. We can get the folder indent or not. We can change the size of the font. This fader control, we can change the size of that. Really intuitively, if it's too small, it becomes a a knob. But otherwise, we can make this really big. I kind of like that small icon. And then we can change the size of the label and sort of align this with other track controls if you wish. Custom color strength. So it actually, if we have a track colored, I'll just color this, the envelope panels can now inherit the color of its parent track, which is super nice. Um, this was not really possible before. Or it was sort of possible, but not implemented undiscovered maybe. All right, let's move on to the mixer panel. All right, so I've got a A, B, and C layout, first tracks one, two, and three. And you can customize any of those with uh, the settings in here. So mixer panel for layout A, we can say show labels and values, and that pops that up. We can, uh, we can choose the, the font size, uh, which is the, the track name, and change the size of the track name. If the track is unselected, we can change the width of it, which is pretty neat. If it's selected, it can have a different set of rules. We can make it really wide if selected, or really small if selected. So different rules for the appearance, uh, whether it's the width, whether it is um, adding a sidebar layout or showing the meter values, these these options are there you know, for you to tweak. And then these rules apply to layout A, B, and C separately. In the if width section, if it's a standard width, we can um, adjust things like which icons are showing. We can't change the order of these at this time. We can also apply a dark strip, which is the default, or not, and so we see more of the track color there. 
if you prefer. And we can hide sections if the panel is below a certain height. And I think you can see that there. If as I adjust the track height, different elements are disappearing. If the panel height is below 320, hide the pan. In this section, we also have some things for mixer preferences, which are sort of duplicates of some of the options in here. Uh, this is actually one of the suggestions I had for the theme adjuster. Uh, so show multiple rows of tracks when size permits. So yeah, if we add in a whole bunch of tracks, there we go. So multiple rows of tracks are there. And that's generally on by default, but we can actually adjust this uh, within the theme adjuster now. So multiple rows when size permits and show maximum rows even when fewer would fit that gives you more rows in a sort of a smaller width or off which is what i like my transport bar is shown here and my i can change the margins so you can kind of spread things out more the rate control can be set to a knob or a horizontal slider the status width can be adjusted and it should kind of scale the the text height along with that to some degree. Selection area here. This can also be adjusted, make it really big or really small. And you kind of just have to experiment with that because if you work with like hours, minutes, seconds, frames, grid, you need a lot more text in these boxes than if you only work in a bars and beats grid. Transport colors can also be tweaked. So by default, it's this sort of gray color and we can uh, make that all the same color across or lighten that section and make these, these buttons stand out even more. And then the status display here, the playing transport section, that can be uh, tinted as well. You can choose any color just like that. And then there are also visibility toggles similar to when you right click and choose show play rate control, show time signatures, show play rate status text. Those options are here as well. Now we're coming back to the section assignments and the section properties. Now this may not make sense the first time you use it. These are the things that the section assignments and section properties pertain to. So the the effects in the track list, the sends, embedded effect UI, and uh, parameters that are set as track controls. So there's a left section, a bottom section, and a right section. There's actually nothing assigned to the left section currently. I'm going to drag the uh, parameters control over to the left section, and now you can see the left section. So left of the track control panel, the tr track control panel shifts over to the middle a little bit, and you have this parameter section. We can add in the effects inserts, and we can add in the track sends, and these three are now there within one column. If we zoom in here on the section assignments, you can see that there's a box around these because the parameter section is sort of special. And you'll see in the section properties, assigned to share the parameter section. When something is in the same sort of box as the parameters, they're going to share the same properties as the parameters. Otherwise, they're independent. And that's sort of the confusing part about this, or it can be a confusing part about this. The parameters section is a special thing, and it sort of defines some rules for the other sections when they're together. It's not the ideal situation, and White Tie tried to make this as simple as possible by, by you know, having the notes here, but how they share, having this box around it to show that they're connected. If you have the track sends or the effects inserts in the same section as the parameters the parameters is sort of the king and the other things have to follow it otherwise they're independent that is something to keep in mind so the parameters rules only affect the inserts and send sections when they're in the same section of the tcp so i'm just going to drag these down into the uh, unassigned section so this is sort of a box where you can put in the things we can just put the uh, parameter down in the bottom Effects inserts on the right and sends on the right. Maybe you notice that when these are all together, they go in a list like this, right? They're all sort of in one column. 
But if the uh, parameters are moved out of there, then they are in two separate sort of sections, two columns, and there's room for another row of, of inserts and another row of sends. So that's because of these section properties. When they're independent, you have all of this control here, maximum width of 88, minimum width of 30, and the same for the sends, 26 and 88. But when they're all linked together, they all have to fit within this 88. Hopefully that makes sense. And as we resize the track width, you can see that they, they will shrink a bit until they're um, at the minimum width. And I think that should be 30 across there now. All right, so I just tweaked the uh, parameter section a little bit uh, so that the minimum width is 100 and the maximum width is 160. And I have the other two sections, the effects, inserts, and track sends in there. And with this setting, um, if the track is tall enough, then we'll see these nice big labels and they'll all be stacked in one vertical column. But as I shrink the track, we can see that they will spill over um, horizontally. And that will adjust a bit depending on sort of the, the maximum width. I was just about to publish the video and I realized as I was editing that I forgot a couple of the things. So just in general, you can reset any of the individual settings by double clicking. So let's say this one here, if this is set to 32 pixels and I wanna return it back to the default setting for this layout, double click and we'll go back to the default of 88. Um, if you click on any of the numbers, a, a double click on any of the numbers, it will bring up a, uh, a little parameter tweak window and it'll even tell you like what the minimum and maximum values are for that. And then the last thing was in the section assignments, um, I forgot to say that there's a little pin and a hide button. So the X is the hide, and the pin will keep this setting uh, or this element within the section visible all the time, whether it is being used or not. So you can see this in this project. This track here has an effect on it, but I'm using this section here as an empty effects bin sort of thing. And you see that because it's pinned. And if this is unpinned, then that, that empty section will hide. And the opacity for that empty section is um, this empty section opacity. So I could put this at 100% and it shows up even darker. But when that's taken off the pin uh, setting, then it's just the, the, the track color. I didn't talk about the master track, but it's, it's fairly self-explanatory. I'm sure there's more that I missed, but these are the main things I wanted to cover. So the theme adjuster, this is made for everyone to use, not just power users. You can get detailed with this. You can really tweak things and break things, but you can never really break things because you can always reset. So just remember, you can always return it to the default settings by using this reset all values to default. And I think it's also important to remember that this script isn't doing any of these functions. This is just changing values within the theme file, essentially. So the theme is saved with its values for all of these sort of functions. And then the script is reading those and allowing you to change it into a separate file. So these settings are saved separately from the original theme. And if you find any settings that you like, you can always export the settings to a new file. Either the changed values or all values can be exported and then imported using this function. So that's it for the default seven theme adjuster. Give it a try. It's included with Reaper. There's no beta testing stuff involved anymore. Yeah, it's free, it's safe, it's easy to use and uh, should be fun to use as well. So go ahead and customize your theme.